Shalom Nisim. Shalom, shalom, shalom. So first of all, I came to meet you here at Yeshiva, and we waited, of course, till the end of the year because that's above all, right? Right, right, right. No, man, man. What are you doing here? Uh, so I learn here every day in the Brussels of Shul and Shari Chesed. We have a Chabur led by uh, Rabbi uh, Moshe Rabinowitz. It's an, uh, it's an amazing, amazing shir. We do one, uh, he does it in English. We're going through Gemara, going through Shulchan Aruch, and, and then also Hashkaf. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. I mean, Shari Chesed, this neighborhood, you know, was filled with a lot of gedolim and tzaddikim, you know, yesteryear. So to be here in this place, learning in places that they said is amazing, amazing. Uh, we'll talk about the, uh, about really coming, joining, joining the nation. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to ask you, when did those words come in? When you know how to say gedolim and Shari Chesed. Uh, okay, when does yeah, that yeah. come in? <laughs> that comes in from watching hours and hours of Shurim and trying to figure out what they say and Google searching what it is. And you hear something over once, you know, like... How does a person pick up street lingo? You just hang out in the streets, and the more you hang out in the streets, you start talk. It's a natural thing. For me, I never reached uh, for to pick up words. I still can't uh, carry a conversation in Hebrew. in Hebrew. But the words is what I'm used to. I'm talking to my Rebbe all the time. This is the way my Rebbe talks. This is the way my, you know, the the, the guys around me talk. So then you you pick it up, and it just starts to become a part of your vocabulary. So a few words about, really, about how you got here. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a long story, but to make a long story short, can it be short? <laughs> <laughs> can it be shortened? Hashem brought me on the, on the, on the wings of eagles, eagles you know. I, I was uh, searching. That's it, you know. At, the, at the, the base, the one, two, three is I was searching for Hashem. I wasn't looking for religion. I was looking just to serve God in the most authentic way. And what I mean by authenticity is I wanted to research and go back and dig up and find out at which point things shifted, when did they change, what was the most pure way of serving Hashem. And, uh, and uh, I think the, the biggest thing for me is when I got to the prophets, when I got to the Navi, and I seen inside that, that how much Hashem loved the Jewish people. And as you know, and, and, and see, you're reading this over and over. Once you know that, you know, not talking about you. This is talking about the special relationship that Hashem has with it. And it, it, it made me, to some degree, I felt very jealous. And like, Hashem, I, I want you too. I was always thought, you know, from religions that I learned in, that, you know, this is for me. But this isn't for me. The Torah wasn't given to me. So I'm looking at it and I'm reading the way David Amelik, he, he's, he's, his whole heart is pouring over how beautiful the Torah is. That, that these, these type of things, that anybody with the real hair, any sensitivity towards ruthless makes them say, I want to be a part of that, I want that. World make over, Mashiach will come take over. You ain't gotta be me or see what I see. All you gotta do is take a look. Was there any point where you uh, considered the idea of recognizing, believing, mm -hmm. but living as a Gentile, uh, the seven laws of, of B'nai Noah, things like that? It's a good, it's like a bait then question you just asked. Oh. It's like one of the first ones they asked you. It's like, why not be a B'nai Noah? There's still a certain uh, relationship that Hashem has with the Yisrael that it, it doesn't, it, it doesn't convey over. Right? You seven, no, if every mitzvah connects a person to Hashem, you have 613 verse 7. At what level of devakis can you receive or attachment to Hashem? You now, who was the first person or who were the first people that you told guys, um, maybe before you told yourself even, that I'm going, I'm going on this? I, the first person I told was my wife. <laughs> and you were this married is not then. when she you was a fan, then. I was married wow. at the time. And I told her, well, the, the first thing I told her was, you know, just the holidays the, uh, and, the, and that I wanted to, you know, not do Christmas and Easter and everything like that. And, before converting, right, just first of all. Right, yeah, yeah. That was even before. It was like the first things to go. Then How I, did she react? She was like, <laughs> not good, not wow. good, not good. But eventually she came along on her own and she was learning and she, and she, because she's also a person, she wanted the Emmys, she wanted the truth. So eventually, together we came, but I think it was uh, just over time, we just naturally grew into this is what we want to do. It's wow. not, uh, it wasn't too much thought. We're not, uh, it wasn't something until like, I had to calculate something, think what am I giving up and all that. When a person falls in love with the Kodesh Baruch, you just want to do. You're not thinking about, you know, 
You're not making so many but how, but how about friends and family? Were there some that said, wow, this is cool? Friends and family all? is tough. The truth is, is that really a person, it's, 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 friends and family, my family, it depends. It's different sides. Some people are supportive because they're like, you know, look, it's better than, you know, living, uh, living a different type of life. Other people, it's not, usually it's not because of uh, a, a change in religion. It's just a change in, in the way our relationship works. Uh, it's very hard to maintain a, sh a strong bond or connection with family when you have a whole different way of seeing the world. It's very, very tough to do. And then to also to give over Yiddish guy very strong to your next generation, to be connected with family that have no idea, no clue. You have to keep uh, explaining the whole thing is education, you know, the whole time. So, do, so it's are very they connected? Tough. Are the kids connected no, to some extent? No, they're not connected to, to, to my family. And, to, and, and out of it's all on purpose, it's not on purpose, it's just like, you know, I live in Yerushalayim, most of my family, you know, at least that I know lives in Seattle and, and everything like that, so it's not very, and even there, it's just like, it's just, you're not even consciously thinking about it, you know, your person is uh, on, on striving to be close to Hashem, you're not thinking of how much, who haven't I called, who haven't I been, you're just trying to do, you're just trying to do, and whatever's in front of you, you want to take care of that at the, that time, so for me, it was very, very tough, a lot of family also too are not, uh, they're not in a place where, you know, I won't even want to show my children just because they have to see and relive a lot of things that I lived as a child, the things that were not good, so you, you have those, uh, you have those issues. When did you understand, decide that, okay, uh, you're gonna uh, dress like a Jew, uh, talk Jew, be a Jew, uh, with all the slang and all? But in terms of the music, you're actually gonna stick to what you bring, what you brought with you. When did you know that you were gonna be able to do that balance? That's a very good question. Um, I, I didn't know I was going to be able to do that balance. Initially, 2009 was uh, what was supposed to be my last album, um, and I, I, I had no way to make it work. I knew that I was striving to be closer to Hashem, and I wanted to live a Jewish life, and I wanted to be connected. I wanted to be more more involved in learning. And, and I, I couldn't make it work. I couldn't make the two work. And, and maybe it was, for whatever reason, I had every feeling that it wasn't the time to, to continue doing all of that. However, as time transpired, like it went by, you know, people, and, and I guess it was also too, and you can't be a part of Hasidus and not learn the power of music of Nagina, how high it is, and, and to know that you have a certain koach and to sit on it, you almost feel like, you know, what am I doing, you know, and so, to, to, so what do you do now? Do I start uh, singing Carl, Carl Bach? <laughs> I, I can't do that. That's not, the, that's not what I have, but I knew that I, I had a special song, but I was a very, very afraid, deathly afraid of, of going back to music on on any level, on any level, because, you know, it's n not too many people. I see people who, who are religious and they lose their religiosity very, very quickly in that world. So Because I, of what it does to an ego, to your because ego. Because of what it does to the ego of a person. It's, it's so, it's such a fine line. And I usually don't advise it for a person. I was walking with one person, he said, listen, I, I'm especially not Especially with, with this music, right? It's all, Ex you always, especially with, with, I'm MC this, right, I'm doing that, it's about with me. Especially with, with, with popular genres. If anybody's going to take, first off, I don't advise it usually for, he's a young Jewish boy or whatever, and he listens to that type of music and all of a sudden he's so, and now he wants to start rapping it doesn't mean that that's it, it, everything that you see that somebody else is doing it doesn't mean it's your vote yeah. It doesn't mean that that's who you are. You still have to find who you are. And for me, I said, what can I bring? One time I talked to my Rebbe about this because I wanted to sing more Nagunim and more like traditional things. On the new record, I just uh, finished that. I'm singing a lot also too. I'm not just rapping, also singing. But And he said, he said but that's not who you are, you know? So that's not had, what I could bring. So your Rebbe actually inspired you to and pushed you to, yeah, yeah, yeah he, rap he, a bit. He, right, right, right. He's just like, you know, listen, is it for him? He doesn't. He's not into rap. But, but this, that's my niche and that's my co-op that I already had that I can and really, and in in I'm also making a tikkun on all the, 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 the trash I put out before, you know what I mean? But so it's uh, for me, it's, it's, it's what I can bring to Israel. I can't bring something that's already been there and that.
I could I could bring that and I see now and I, I didn't see this I didn't cop in the beginning I didn't see it I didn't see but now that I see how many kids how many people are, are, are not attracted to the music but they 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 feel inspired and more happy with the Yiddishkeit when they listen to the music it does something to how do you respond to people, maybe old timers, uh -huh. who say, no, uh, it's not Chayek, no, right, right, right. what is this, what <laughs> That's is this That's a stuff? good question. Because, no, but they, they, have, they have they have reasoning they have because of the, the, the atmosphere that it exists listen, and the words coming from. And the I don't listen to rap music, I'm being honest. I say it, if I, I don't listen to it. Listen to me because I, I trust me because I know me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and, I, and I don't listen to non-Jewish music. Uh, but to the, to the older people, they, first off, first off it takes a lot of times. If a person just saying it because already they just don't understand it, that's that's one thing. I, I'm not asking anybody to listen to. If you don't listen, I like rap. Don't listen to it. I will all, by all means, but to categorize it as something that is not and it's and this and listen, I can at least say on myself that I'm concentrated. It's not a gimmick by me. I'm in this for the shamas. I'm in it from the shamas a thousand percent and anybody that knows me knows it and anybody that listens that has a real hair guess you take a tzaddik can listen to it really they'll feel they feel the essence of my heart that I'm after the shamas I don't I don't even do gimmicky raps people always because you rap they wanted you to do this and do that and make this type of thing I don't do it in the streets somebody wants me to rap they want to take a selfie and they want me to rap it's not a gimmick by me I'm on something and this is my avoda you mentioned before before we started filming that how important and, and high and eagerness when you're singing with that words and you're actually singing with so many words yeah. but no but that's interesting what is the uniqueness that you can uh, convey a message actually with so many words with so fast someone would say hey wait a second what did he say or is that maybe actually you actually are able to do a lot with the rap right right it's, it's more so uh, describing ideas and concepts with the rap the emotion the person because uh, generally what I've gotten from people who are not into rap, they may come and see me live and say, listen, I don't know what you said, but the the, the passion I, I picked up on and I felt, I don't know what you said. And this these type of things happen all the time. I go to, to Tzadik uh, Tzvi Meyer to go hear Shir, he gives after, after you know, Seldash Lishit he's going, and he's going, sing Yiddish. I don't understand what he's saying, but my nisham is picking up on it because I can feel it inside. I know, wow. I know it's all fire. I can feel it in there, but I don't know. I don't know what he's saying. So the the rap almost is d describing and giving concepts for a person that can listen, that can that can understand, a person that can hear and, and and understand that type of thing. But always with me, I'm always involved in the music, the background music, because I want the emotion to be there, I want a person to feel it. If the kicks there, I want it to be felt in the heart. If we're playing strings, chords, and all those different things. So that's the real by me that's the real thing the rap i'm just filling it in you know type of thing but so, uh, i'll tell you what nisim you know uh i when i was first, first uh, started to hear your music see the mm -hmm. clips i wanted to contact you and you were in america so it was hard mm -hmm. but you made it easy yeah. for me you came and made LEI. yeah amazing with yeah. nefesh benefesh you're here yeah, now and this is uh amazing. the best decision i ever made my wife oh. says every day like this is the best thing we ever did they say you know for me people say what made you want to it's like from the moment I started learning anything about Yiddishkeit, it was always in my heart to do. I wanted to do. I'm Israel, the Torah, and it's Israel is all one thing. It's, a, it's all one concept. It's to separate that maybe I can be outside. And it, uh, for me, Nisim Black, thank you very much. First of all, thank you for coming to Israel. Uh, thank thank you. you for creating your music, and thank you for being with us. Thank you. Thank it's you. Great meeting you. Nice meeting you. Good luck. All the best. And I can't wait cause I imagine those big gifts in that birthday cake Let that song play, wait, DJ bring that back After party in the social hall with Libra and Nisim Black This is something to sing about, I am now full member The last party like this was the bris, thank God I can't remember I feel so accomplished, all of the honor, it makes me feel so grown now A parent to feeling, I count in a million and yes, sir, I ain't no child